Hello, I have a real treat for you today. It's a conversation with Helen Staniland. Yes, that Helen Staniland. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and a big welcome to Helen Staniland, who is Hello. an absolutely fabulous person to have as my first guest on my YouTube channel. So thanks so much, Helen, for joining me. I'm in my- Thank little, you for inviting me. I'm in my little cubicle in my hallway and you've got your lovely <laughs> piano and your cello and everything. Um, I'm quite, I feel quite familiar with your music room because, because of course we see it, don't we, every week? Honestly, I spent all my time here. Uh, this is, this used to be, my, this was a box room until, um, you know, COVID hit and then quickly, suddenly we had to just, I had to move in here to work. And so I finished work and then I'm here on the mess and then I Played surf around. the web and I, it's the smallest room in the house by the toilet and I spent all my time in here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Right, so I've got I've got some questions, serious questions. Like this is a proper interview, and I haven't known you for a long time. These are these are proper questions. So the first thing I wanted to say was we've we've kind of known each other for a while because we've been on Twitter and we followed each other for a long time. But can you think back to the dim and distant past? What what was it? What how did you get involved in the gender wars? What was it that that you, that happened? It was it was it was through uh, the no more page three campaign. So I'd I'd kind of seen that around on Facebook and I got involved in that. And then a friend of mine at work said, "Oh, you might want to join this thing called Twitter." And so I joined that, and no more page three had a presence there. And through that. I, you know, found other women to follow and, you know, how that network grows. And then after the normal page three thing, sort of, well, pretty much they won to, to yeah. an extent. Um, it, you know, we were, we were all still there. And I'd, and I'd already seen it start, this, this idea of a, of a turf. I'd already yeah. seen this um, from, you know, people like uh, Glosswich, Sarah Dighton, um, Judy Bindle, just sort of talking about it and I you know I did that classic thing that everyone does thinks well I'm not a turf I mean I agree with all of this and I think this but I'm not one of those turfs you know and I followed the arguments and I followed the discussions and I thought in the end I thought but this is me this just described me perfectly I just, well it doesn't describe me perfectly it is directed at somebody with my views and then at that point, I thought, well, I'm not going to hide anymore. You know, I had I had put together, I had got a little sock account that I was posting stuff on. And I thought, no, I'm going to do this under my own name. So I did. And that was in, back in, I think I joined Twitter in 2011. So I think it may be 2012, 13, maybe I started, mm. I started posting about it. And then I started finding um, radical feminists and you know, people like you and all of the other wonderful women that I've that I've met and followed um and, and that was it and it sort of escalated from there but it's only really I mean we were we were sort of shouting into the void weren't we for years all yeah. this um but it's but the past few years has really really escalated isn't it it's absolutely yes. brilliant I mean you know well that's why I've started doing the YouTube channel because I just feel emboldened, you know, that now that we've got like the four status judgment and we've got the Miller judgment and we've got Scotto's cases as well, it just feels like, um, you know, we've got a lot more protections and also I'm not working. So it's not like somebody can come along and cancel me. Um, no, it's a different No, situation. that's right, that's I mean, right. Yeah, I mean, I, I do understand, you know, a lot of women do have, have problems. I mean, I know when I was still, professionally registered I had to deal with a lot of complaint they were forever complaining and it never went anywhere but it's like you know every every single woman yes. is going through it the process is the punishment and the and the punishment is to make you prepare for these endless conversations hearings meetings all the rest of it with this threat hanging over you so anyway one of the well I think it's great I, I think it's great that you can do it I think it's great that you've thought well I can speak out and so ah oh, I, 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 I think that, I think that's excellent well, and also it's something that I figured, well, what can I do from home? You know, COVID and everything else. And, you know, that we've all got different commitments, haven't we? And I thought, you know what, it is actually something I can do from home. I can edit videos and um, 
I'll just take it at my own pace. I, it's just been great. It's just been great because there's so many women that have just been really lovely and just said, yeah, oh, this is great. You know, I've been looking for this or I, I, I needed to hear this. Oh, fun to, I'll keep making them. I'll keep making them. It's, it's really That's so great. So I want to go back in time to your wonderful polling that you did, the populist polling. Um, uh, so thinking back to that time, we were still in a, a, a place in the debate where people were still saying the vast majority of the general public is absolutely fine with all of these changes that we're yes. proposing. It's only you tiny little group of women that have got a problem with it. So was that was that why you decided to? Yes, that's it. That's exactly why. That's exactly why. Um, this this uh, friend of mine at work who said you should join Twitter, he, you know, I was talking to him about it, and he was saying, "Well, look, you know, these people keep on saying it to you all the time." He, he said, "Why don't you try and find out?" And I thought, "What well, what a great idea!" Um, yeah. You know, I thought I thought I've got enough followers to get it out there, and so I crowdfunded for this poll and honestly it was astonishingly it was astonishing to me how quickly the money started oh, coming everyone in everyone was like that's perfect yes five quid ten quid twenty quid every it was done it was done in a, it was done in about three it hours i had enough money in about three hours um, yeah. and that in it that in itself shows yes. that it isn't like a, the the tiniest tiniest corner unless you know in that tiniest corner everyone followed me but um, it, it, it wasn't, was it? You know, yeah. we did the poll. We asked about six questions um, and the results were pretty much as expected. I think it was um, around uh, around the sort of 17, 18, 19 percent mark on whatever question we asked in relation to a male bomb person in women's spaces, women's sports, women's prisons, um, women's changing rooms. And it was about 19 percent of people said yes. That this is this is where they should go, and I've I've had people say to me, "Oh yes, but that was back in 2018. It was October 2018." But honestly, we've seen the really consistent results with that YouTube poll, not mm. the, the YouGov poll you that go, was done yeah. la last last summer, mm. where they asked the nebulous question about um, you know trans women that that everyone posts saying, "Oh look, you know they're completely accepted as women by women," and then you go down to the small print where mm. it says how about if this person has male genitalia and it goes right back down to virtually exactly the same percentages around sort of 18 19 percent of people say yes and the mm. vast majority say no yeah which echoes everybody's experience i mean if you were to ask all the women that you know um there might be a few kind of young people who've been to college or to school where they've been told that you know everything's hunky-dory and we should all be kind um but everybody else is going to say no I don't want to be no I don't want to be getting changed with people with a penis around no, no, that, no that's right kids to a changing room no. where there's people with penis yeah ab absolutely I mean obviously it stands to reason doesn't it I mean nobody's yeah. nobody nobody thinks it I mean really genuinely how do anyone thinks it and the people who do they again they're probably thinking because of the questions they didn't at the time ask um, communal changing rooms it just asked for changing rooms so even then one imagines that some people might be thinking that it's just that they've got cubicles within the changing rooms um, because uh, you know when I ask the the question that I, I have now honed down on Twitter and I ask about communal changing rooms and people with penis um, it, it, it's extraordinary how you've got the people who believe no, perfectly happy to say no, but anyone who might believe yes will not say. I mean, I've had the tiniest fraction of people say yes, and I think probably only about two or three people under their own names have ever said yes to that. And honestly, I welcome people answering the question mm. honestly, saying yes, because at least then you've got a springboard from which to um, have a discussion from. Because you you know you can that you can then ask about the idea you know I think I've said this uh, many times before but it's probably um, it, it bears repeating the idea of Chesterton's fence, mm. which which is um, you know it was G K Chesterton came up with with the, uh, the the sort of notion of it if what the if you heck? want to change hang on, something hang on, Helen ha just wait one second what's going okay. on. 
Oh, shitting hell. What have you not, have it, has it stopped Are recording? Are you there still? I don't know what's happened, I, I, it's just... I am. Are you still, hang on a second. I'm, I think it might have just closed me down because it's 45 minutes of video or something. Oh, yeah. there you are. Okay, I'll cut that bit out. It's fine, you're still okay. here. Okay. Oh, you were saying so, yeah, Chesterton. I was saying, sense. yes. Okay, so it, it, it's, I've said this many times before, but it, it, it bears repeating about Chesterton's fence, which is this idea that if somebody comes uh, across a fence in the middle of the road, they might say, this fence just needs to be taken away, it's in the way. Mm. And, but a, a, a sort of a thoughtful reformer should first consider what is the purpose of this fence? And then only after that, when you can adequately and honestly explain the purpose of the fence should you be allowed to make an argument for its removal mm. um, and and i think there's a, a a massive problem with this idea about single sex spaces in that people are not prepared to do that obviously they're not prepared to do that because if they had to honestly um, make a case for why they are there they, they they certainly their argument in order their argument to remove them would be really quite inadequate, I think. Absolutely. I mean, with, you know, it's there in law, isn't it? We've got these spaces for privacy, dignity, and safety. So which of those three do we no longer deserve or do we no longer need? Which, you know, what, what's the solution? Uh, yes. I know. I, I know. mean, I, um, I just uploaded some videos recently with that um, Tom Harwood on uh, GB News talking about- Yeah, I saw, issues. I saw. <laughs> And uh, the, the guy used your Stanerland question in his actual, um, you know, his his. Oh, Paul Paul em, Paul Embury, who 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 said, and I and I really did appreciate this. The the sort of pointing out that the emperor was naked. No, everyone knows what I mean by a biological Absolutely. man. Everyone, even you, you know this. Uh, and uh, you know, I think I think I said I've said recently. It's it's on on Twitter. So it just occurred to me that trans activism is a movement that refuses to state what rights it's fighting for on the grounds that it might incriminate itself. <laughs> and honestly, yeah. this is exactly what's going on, isn't it? They, it, it, it it's, it's all hidden, it's all pretense, it's all, uh, it's all deflection. You know, how can it possibly, how can anyone possibly believe that Tom Howard doesn't know what a biological man is? It's such an obvious Absolutely. way to stall the conversation, to stall the question there and then, to have yeah. to have to get something like, oh, you know, what are humans? I mean, it's insane and it's and it's disingenuous and it's and it shows such an incredible level of contempt yeah, towards it's a lack of respect, not just your, lack of your opponent. Engagement. But your listeners everywhere, it shows a huge lack of, um, a huge level of contempt towards everyone. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that, that the pretense that he doesn't know what a biological man is. I mean, well, God's I sake. Think, I think we used to do this several years ago. We used to do a lot more of this going round and round the houses where, um, you know, people would say, well, what is, you know, what is a man and what is a woman, you know? And you'd be like, well, a male is a person that is like this and yes feel, and now i'm feeling a lot more comfortable with that saying get out of course you know what a male yes. is and what a female is yes. for goodness sake you're an evolved mammal that's <laughs> you've been yes this, this, but you honestly need to but, notice that there's a difference has been selected for for millions if not billions for, yes, of years for forever for all time for all sort of human yeah. time anyway and now but this is one of the that because you've got an earring we can't tell yes just <laughs> yeah. but this but this is the reason why the the, my, the, the question that I've asked has, has had to change over yeah. over time, you know, because I used to say, uh, I think I may have even said man a couple of times at the beginning, but now Twitter's, you know, mixed that. Then I would say sort of uh, male sex person, but then people would pretend not to know what that means. What, is mm. it, what does sex person mean? What does that mean? So then yeah. you'd say male bodied people and people would be like, what's a male bodied person? Uh, that, they're female, so they've got a female body. But male born person now is slight. that's finally I've hit on one that people can can't really pretend not to know what it is. But then and then again, it's the same with changing rooms. I used to say changing rooms, but then people would say, oh, changing rooms have stalls. So then I had to put the word communal in. And then, uh, you know, and then so so basically the the how the question is now framed. Because people say, oh, you just want to make out that trans people are paedophiles. Why do you use the word girls? And it's simply because 
this question, it's the least defensible scenario. It is, mm -hmm. but it is still a scenario that does come under, it would, it would happen. Mm -hmm. You know, if, mm -hmm. if self-ID is the way to get into changing rooms, there are communal changing rooms, they are, they're not age separated, they're sex separated. Mothers take their little girls in all the time to take them swimming. So it's it's the least defensible scenario. If you can defend that one, you'll defend anything mm. to do with self-ID. So you might as well go straight for the jugular and say, well, will you defend this really hard scenario? Are mm. you honest enough? Mm. And mm. the answer is no, no of course. No, People are really not are. honest enough. They are absolutely phenomenally dishonest when it comes to this. It's been, it's an incredible thing to have witnessed over the last few years. I genuinely thought that in asking it, it would simply make people consider what it is that they're asking for. That was the point of it. If mm. somebody who'd come along who hadn't really thought about this issue, you'd say, mm. well, do you believe this? And I honestly thought in my naivety, oh. the people would say, oh yes, actually that's mm. a really good point. I hadn't considered that. Okay, yes, maybe there should be limits set on it then. And that's a decent conversation. But actually, that's not been my um, experience at all. It's been, oh, you're obsessed with genitalia, you're a pervert, why do you want to undress with little girls? Why do you want women to undress with little girls? Oh, there are stalls everywhere. We should uh, we should get rid of communal change rooms. Communal change rooms are awful. I, the, the most incredible answers. Uh, it's, 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 and it's, that's what's, that's what's really shown me that I don't, I don't really think that people actually want to find a solution they really just want to have, they, they, they want to just a blanket, but whatever women want, they, they could just be ridden roughshod over. We, we, there's no compromise. They don't want to compromise. They just want what they want. And actually even more so, I think a lot of people just like the game of being able to have a go at women and call them names. Not even sure that a lot of people who are activists even really care. They just want to have a go at women on the internet. I think there's a lot of that going on. I hope you enjoyed it. See you again soon.